You guys can come out. Hold on. It's early evening, just after sunset, and America's favorite dysfunctional family of superheroes, the Fantastic Four, have just returned home after a day of fighting crime and avoiding the paparazzi. As usual, Ben Grimm is in a foul mood. Ugh, if there's one thing I hate more than Doctor Doom, it's them lousy shuttle bugs. Why do they always gotta follow us around like we're some kind of freaks? Johnny Storm, always ready to start trouble, especially if it's with Ben, yells out from the kitchen, I hate to break it to you, Boulder Breath, but you are a freak! <laughs> As is usually the case, Johnny's teasing is the last straw. Ben starts chasing Johnny around the penthouse yelling, It's clobbering time! Over and over, while Johnny flings fireballs at Ben's face, pause for action. <laughs> no. Up. Susan and Reed, hearing the racket, run into the kitchen, only to find it completely demolished and partially smoldering, with Ben holding Johnny and a half Nelson in the middle of the wreckage. Smoothing back his impeccably stylish salt and pepper hair, Reed glares at the two and sputters, Thanks to you two, the structural matrix of the dimorphic resonance capacitor I've been repairing has been severely compromised. It'll take months before I can fabricate another fuel in the cell. Susan, as furious as Reed, also has a few words to say. The quiche I had been preparing for dinner just fell because you bozos were horsing around. And yes, I realize that my being in the kitchen while my husband is working in the laboratory might be misconstrued as a sexist gender role stereotype, but rest assured, I enjoy the culinary arts and find them to be just as challenging and rewarding as Reed's advances within the scientific community. <laughs> Johnny, by this point becoming rather lightheaded as a result of being underneath Ben Grimm's substantially dank armpit for so long, <laughs> was quick to defend himself. Hey, I can't help it if this meathead gets so bent out of shape every time someone takes his picture. I mean, come on. We should be out there getting exposure and working the crowds, not hiding out like a bunch of rejects. We got powers, let's use them. Everyone rolled their eyes at this argument, one that they had heard many times before. Johnny said an exasperated read, we've been over this. Just because we can do things other people can't doesn't mean we can just run off without any consideration of our well-being. We need to stick together and support each other. And some of us, like Ben, might not be as happy with their powers as you are. You guys don't know a good thing when you see it, replied Johnny. You're all treating what we have like it's a disease. Well, I'm sick of it. I'm getting out of this place and live the life I want. I'm going to fight outlandish supervillains and have crossover fights with Spider-Man and snowboard with hot babes. I'll show you. And so Johnny set off with nary a glance back. At first, life was great for Johnny. A day didn't go by that he was fighting dastardly beast bandex animal themed criminals. <laughs> neener, neener, neener. <laughs> I am the armadillo. Punch, crash, kick, and so on. Oh, I am defeated. Stuff. 
Yes, life was good for young and impetuous Johnny Storm. Over time, however, Johnny began to grow tired of super villains. <laughs> I am General Malaise, and I do believe I will punch your lungs clean off. Ow. Or endorsement deals. Johnny Honeybunch, how are them lungs? Listen, I know it's short notice and all, but you're going to be flying to Antarctica this afternoon to do a Nike commercial. It shall. <laughs> it don't matter. And hot babes. So, Johnny, what do you think of our hair today? Did you like it up or down? Or up or down? Johnny, you're not listening. We're fighting. Every day, Johnny's situation seemed to get worse and worse. He was constantly hounded by the very things that he once thought were important. It didn't take long before Johnny began to miss the way Ben would give him highly abrasive noogies whenever he ate the last Malamar, or how Reed would go on and on about extra-dimensional neutronic gateways, or even how his sister would sometimes make her skin invisible while everyone was eating. Yes, Johnny longed for the relative simplicity of home and for the unconditional love that his family gave him. Jeez, I miss those guys so much. I'd never be able to show my face to them again. I mean, being the way I acted. They never let me come home. Despite his worries, Johnny soon couldn't take the loneliness anymore and decided to head home. I, I guess I can ask Reed to forgive me and if, you know, best case scenario, he make me a butler or at least a test subject for one of his experiments. With his trademark, flame on! Flame on! Johnny shot off into the sky and headed back home. When he arrived, he was surprised to see Reed and the rest of his family out on the patio awaiting him. How did you guys know I was coming home, he asked. Well, said Ben, it's kind of a feeling we had on account of us missing you so much. But it was mostly because you looked like a giant freaking fireball and you, we saw you coming from five miles away. <laughs> Oh, you guys, replied Johnny. You mean you really miss me? Susan said, of course we do, Johnny. You're part of our family, and although we might not see eye to eye all the time, we still love you. Reed added, you know, the important thing is that you came home. Everything else is forgiven and forgotten. Welcome back, Johnny. Live crashes heard off stage. Oh no, said Johnny. If I'm not mistaken, that must be Dr. Doom up to his old tricks. Let's get that jerk. And everybody, superheroes on stage. <laughs>